that I described is true, and I, I'm pretty convinced it is, and if the, how government responds to that landscape, increasingly using a whole of government approach or needs to use a whole of government approach, is largely true. Um, then performance audit, using ESI standards, but performance audit needs to make, we need to make sure that evolves with, with, in tandem with the complexity of the types of issues that government is trying to achieve. So in other words, at least to, you know, many performance audits we've seen in the past, all very valuable, we'll continue to do this type of work, but we're largely programmatic or ministry focused. Go in, particular program, make a judgment about how that program is working, report that back out. Boy, it gets real hard when you're start saying, Oh yeah, we're not talking about a program, we're talking about gender equity. And we want to see how that plays out across an entire array of government programs. We're talking about making sure that we have sustainable health programs. And guess what? That's not just the health ministry. That's making sure that we have the right food, that's making sure we have the education in place, that's making sure, that's making sure transportation is in place. One of the things that blew me away, and this is just because I'm ignorant, you know, is that the, one of the key, the key Millennium Development Goals that we did not make last time was the reduction, we didn't hit the targets on the reduction of women that do, died during childbirth. One of the root causes of that was poor transportation systems, poor infrastructure. Um, and that is, if something went wrong, they couldn't get the mom to the hospital in time during childbirth. If you had said to me, before I'd kind of read this, and said, Chris, you know, go to the White Board, write the list of things that we need to have happen if we're going to reduce the incidence of deaths of women during childbirth, I'll bet you, well, I, I don't have to bet you, I can tell you, I wouldn't have at the top of that list better roads, right? Yet a whole government perspective gets you there. Complexity gets you there, you know? And what I want to suggest is that's what makes the, what, what you all have been doing so cool, is that it's, it's moving from performance audit, which is programmatically based, to program, performance audit, which is systems based. Um, it's real hard work, but it's the cutting edge stuff. Um, and that's, that's where the world is going, that's where our stakeholders are going, that's where our clients are going, and that's what makes it, you know, so, so exciting. Okay, so all of that was kind of point number one on kind of where we are on, on what the, the whole of government is. Point number two, let me suggest what this means concretely within the 2030 agenda. And, and obviously, and I've already alluded to some of that, the, the 2030 agenda is basically the global agenda that recognizes and seeks to make progress on all of these complex problems that our countries confront. Um, and you're all now very, very familiar with it, so I'm not going to go through. I mean, of course, they're, they're, well, there it is, right? There's the graphic, and, you know, um, we are contractually obligated to show that graphic anytime we talk about the 2030 agenda, right? You have to always show the, that standard one. Um, so obviously, we're not going to go through that. A couple of observations just to remind us about what, the, what it entails. First is the universality of the agenda. Um, unlike the MDGs, which were in some ways global north talking to the global south, or rich countries talking to poor countries. This is a set of commitments that is for all of us. When I talk at home, and, I, you know, and that, that takes a little bit of convincing sometimes to, to citizens and even stakeholders at home. They'll look at the goal and say, geez, extreme, we want to deal with extreme poverty. You know, that's a, there are about 750 million people globally that live on less than, it's, the, the goal is $1.25, it's been inflated to about $1.95 a day. 750 million people live on less than $1.95 a day. This, this bottle of water was probably darn close to $1.95 US. You know? And that's, that's not just, they're not living on that just Monday, but then Tuesday, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, forever in their life. And I have people at home that will tell me, oh, those poor people, what are we going to do with them? And I said, yeah, you know, we have to help them out. Their estimates are that there's anywhere between 300,000 and 1.2 million Americans that live on less than $1.95 a day. These goals can include us. Um, and so, I mean, it's, you know, that's just, a, but they, they, they're, they're universal in their application. Second, they are to be integrated and indivisible. And that gets to the point that we were just using, just whether on maternal health, on education, on any of the others. It's not something that it's a matter of just picking and choosing and saying, all right, I'm just looking at this just in isolation. Um, even though we may be doing individual performance audits or program agencies, agency, uh, governments may be working on individual ones. It's the interconnections across them and that's, that's, that's very important. Third key element that I would uh, just mention on, on this is, that the, um, is, the, is the absolute commitment to leave no one behind in inclusion. Um, this is you know, right at the center of the 2030 agenda. It's not something that it's just, you know, we're, gonna, we're gonna deal with the easy cases or we're gonna deal with the ones that, you know, that, uh, um, that we're most comfortable with. 
but we've, we've collectively, each of our national governments, every single one of us, our, our national governments voted on this and approved it, we committed collectively that no one will be left behind. Fourth key thing, and this is particularly important for us here in the audit and evaluation community, is goal 16 and 17. And that is effective governance, effective institutions is part of the agenda. It was not part of the Millennium Development Goals. I mean, it was recognized as being important, but it was recognized as being just, you know, governance in that case was in somewhat, some sense enabling mechanisms, other things that you need to do in order to achieve those. That's true here too, but they're also part of the agenda. There's a whole set of commitments as part of 16 and 17 that each of our national governments has, has committed to. Um, so we've, we've drilled in, or the national government's drilled in right into the 2030 agenda of focus on governance. Very, very powerful. Next, and then the, and that's all very important for us in the audit and evaluation community, is that there was a commitment to follow up and review as part of the 2030 agenda. What's very interesting is that as part of the Millennium Development Goals, if, you, if you're involved in it, if you remember the history of it, it wasn't until several years in that the global community started thinking about, you know, we need to think about how we're going to measure some of these. And we need to think about, you know, what the reporting framework's going to look like. And we need to think about, whether, you know, geez, you know, are countries going to report or how are we going to do some of that sort, sort of stuff? And that was, that was understandable. I mean, I'm not being critical of people that worked on that. But they learned from that experience when they were putting together the 2030 Agenda. And so they committed as part of that agenda, again, drilled into the, into the Transforming Our World um, document that the countries uh, all agreed to, a, a follow-up and review mechanism that works at the global level, it works at the thematic level, it looks at the, works at the regional level, and it's for us, you know, what's most important is it works at the national level. Um, and of course, as the centerpiece of that is the high-level political forums at, that are done both at the ministerial and then every fourth year at the state level at the United Nations each July. Um, a very big deal. Our country's committed as part of the transforming our world, as part of the agenda, that follow up and review would be an, an absolutely essential part of that. And obviously, we're at, we're at the center of that. Which then gets into the, uh, um, the, 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 the next point that I wanted to cover with us, um, which, is that it, which is kind of the follow up and review infrastructure, as I like to refer to it. And that what that infrastructure means and the key role that SAIs have in that. I mentioned there's the, 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 the high level political forum where there's, you know, that, that's going to be, that, that's the mechanism, that the, the fundamental UN global institutional mechanism for learning lessons, what works, what doesn't work, progress that's being made in implementation, and how to move forward on that. Second key element is basically the statistical agencies and statistical data that's being used on, on how are we actually doing against targets. Are we reducing those 170, 70 million, or those 750 million people that um, live in extreme poverty? How are we doing against that target? How are we doing against all the targets? And that's, you know, many of the, obviously your reports talked about it, uh, that as well. That's where we have performance measures and those kind of the three tier concept that's been set up as part of the um, interagency uh, expert group on uh, IAEG, right? <laughs> on, on, uh, on, uh, on the performance information, um, uh, to, to, uh, rather on the, uh, the performance uh, measures. Um, and so that's the, the statistical data tells us how we're going against the goals. Third key part of that infrastructure is evaluations and reviews that we've all seen that are being done by civil society organizations or not for non-governmental institutions. And so there are things like, for example, the you know, World Bank has done assessments, a number of the aid agencies, I've seen GIZ has done one, um, that uh, some of them are sector-based where you'll have a particular uh, NGO or civil society organization that cares about a particular sector and we'll do a review on, on progress associated with that. The fourth part of that I want to suggest to us is you, is us, SAIs. We're the ground truth. Everyone else is talking about the, the voluntary national reviews that our countries are doing. They're very valuable stuff, but they're reporting out on, on their perspective on how they're doing. Statistical agencies are just giving these, the outcomes. Civil society organizations are very, very valuable, but just by nature, they only have a, part, a partial review. They don't have the perspective, the access to information that, that we have. We're the ground truth. We're the ones that can be able to say, as your report showed, we hear what people are saying. Now let's let, let, it, let us tell you how that's actually playing out in practice. And so if you, if you think of it as a follow-up and review infrastructure, we are absolutely essential to, to that. And that's, that's not just me. Let me just suggest here. I mean, this is, um, the, the UN produced is, is, is you know, that, this is the, the summary of the 2016 and 17 
Um, this is actually the World Public Sector Report to 2018, but it's, the, it, it's, it's drawn from a variety of sources, but a lot of it is the VNRs from the 2016-17. Uh, Here's the line in there about what you've been doing, right? That, uh, that this is in the report, right? Um, amid these challenges, talk about challenges to, to, to SDGs, um, including understanding complexity and audits, as we've been doing. Intosci is building the capacity of SAIs to, adopt, to audit horizontal integration, right? E.g., through a capacity building program on auditing SDGs. The program will support SAIs to conduct cooperative performance audits and preparedness for implementation. These audits take a whole of government approach and emphasize the issues of inclusiveness and stakeholder engagement. Um, this is just one of many, including the UN General Assembly resolutions that have been passed in the, you know, over the last several years, of which expectations are being placed on us in the, in the SAI community. Um, we now need to step up and make sure that we fulfill those expectations. Your reports, the work that you've been doing, the work that we're going to be talking about next week and going forward is an absolutely essential down, down payment to that. And that's the point that was, ma'am, that you, you were making earlier, right? Is that we need to make sure that we're part of that global conversation that's, that's taking place on, on follow-up and review. There's expectations. We need to make sure that we actually are, 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 are meeting those expectations. That, um, so the approach that we took right from the very beginning was that we grounded our audit methodology in the framework that's being used as part of the voluntary national reviews. Um, and that, that had a couple of you know, just, just great advantages, it, it seems to, to me, for, for, that, for us. First is that the, the questions, topics that we looked at as part of our audits, were agreed upon by each of our nation states. So it's not something I hope that when you went into the agencies and started asking questions about horizontal or vertical integration, I mean, I'm sure you, you use different words, um, or about stakeholder engagement, or about means of implementation, or about follow-up and review mechanisms and quality of data, I hope and expect that you didn't get back, well, hold on, that's, you know, that, that's not relevant to what we're trying to do here, is that our countries have already agreed that those are important and valuable questions that need to be asked because those are the framework or how they're going to be reporting as part of the voluntary national reviews. Second thing is that, the, the, is that those issues, in a sense, had already been vetted is that by, the, by the United Nations, and by other scholars and people, and in practice through the Millennium Development Goals, we knew the types of questions that we were asking is that if, if depending on, the, if we got good answers to those, that would give us an honest assessment, an honest point of view on how countries were doing and implementing the agenda. Um, so it's not, again, something that was just a, you know, that we would run the risk of spending a lot of time doing a lot of work that at the end of the day, we'd, we'd say, hey, this is not working or it is working, and it turns out not to be relevant to the implementation that's being made. Third key advantage of using the follow-up and review mechanism, or rather the voluntary national reviews framework as part of our audit strategy, is that it makes sure what we find can be rolled up in ways that will, it'll be part of the conversation that's going on globally. We won't have to figure out a side way, or we won't have to translate what we're doing and say, okay, oh, we can crosswalk our audit questions into what the rest of the world is talking about, we are instantly going to be part of the conversation that's taking place. So those three, those three factors, in my view, really were the breakthrough insight of how we were different and how this, the approach that you did was different from at least some of the other things that have been going on, in, in, you know, including in the Intosci community. Um, by using the VNR framework as our, as, our re, as our criteria, as our research questions, it really positions us very well going forward. So now that, uh, um, so let's, you know, as you know, our three research questions then were first, to what extent has the government adopted the SDGs into its national context? Second, has the government identified and secured needed resources and capabilities? And then uh, third, has a monitoring, follow-up, review, and report mechanism been, been established? That, uh, 